All right, let's invite forward James. And uh, this was a little bit different style of presentation than we yeah. generally have, so I was very interested, especially when one of the slides said Indiana Jones. And uh, can I preface one thing? The slides up there are examples of a screenplay, not intended for you to read everything, is that's not my intent. I'll talk about this movie, and you guys can catch some glimpses as we're going along. Does that sound like a plan? Alrighty, my name's Jim Glover, and I'm going to make you guys all studio execs. You just screwed up recently by passing on the movie Avatar. It came in front of you, you didn't choose to make it, so now you're looking for the next great movie. Maybe this is it. So, this is an action-adventure set in New Mexico. I've lived here for 20 years, and I love the state, and so imagine a film about Indiana Jones, about the Goonies, and Lord of the Rings, wrap it all together, put it in New Mexico. That's what the movie's about. So, it starts out with a premise. A thousand years ago, an Indian warrior wanted to find this, the um, uh, White Pueblo, the sacred place of the Indians, and so he went on a quest. And he actually found it, and he was given the rights to protect that white Pueblo forever. Then comes along the professor, a thousand years later. He tries to follow in the footsteps of the warrior, but can't, and he fails, and he takes a dive, and his whole life ends. No, not really. He opens a dinosaur camp. Along the way, his daughter goes after a PhD. She wants to distance herself from her dad because he's just been ridiculed, he's a disgrace, but she's got to work at this camp to help the dad and uh, raise some money for her PhD. So the movie starts in 1540. Conquistador Diego Sanchez is being chased by this giant beast. We don't know why, we don't know what. And he finally succumbs to the beast and he collapses and in his hand is a fetish in the shape of a bear. Now we see Kelly across the mesa top diving over a cliff on a rock. She goes down the side of the cliff to look at a petroglyph. She checks out in her notebook that it is the same image that her dad had in his notebook. Maybe he was right all along. So then the diggers show up. These are the kids that come to this camp thinking they're going to have a great time, but it's a piece of crap camp, but they still have a good time. And also Zach shows up. He's going after his PhD too, and he's going to try to steal Kelly's work so he can get his degree. So, the kids decide they're going to go out one morning on a bike ride, they're riding along, and one of the kids flies over the handlebars because he hits something. When they look down, they see that it's this, the top of a sword. They dig it out, and sure enough, it's Diego Sanchez's sword. Now they truly are the diggers. They race back to the professor and Kelly and say, look what we found. So now they all go on the dig together. They dig, they dig, they dig, they find all the armor. And Kelly finds the amulet, but she doesn't let anybody know. But the moment she touches that amulet, a Native American is right next to her, his name is Lucky. <laughs> so that night they're discussing the, the, uh, the uh, white pueblo and whether they should go after it or not. And the professor's going, God, if we could only find that fetish, we would have had something. And she's hiding it all along. But she decides that they're going to go on this trip um, together. And she grabs up the kids and they take off. And uh, she doesn't want to tell her dad because she doesn't want him to get his hopes up. So they go off on this big, big journey together one morning, seeking the white pueblo. So, like any good movie, there's tons of conflict, and there's conflict all along this movie. They've got to fight javelinas, they've got to fight gila monsters, they've got to fight storms, they've got to fight caves, even snot types, which are um, a sick, uh, acid that drips down from caves and burns you. Um, but the movie also has a great central plot of going after the white pueblo, but it has subplots, coming of age, in love with Lucky Nut, and then uh, also finding out that Zach's a real shit, which is the uh, part of the story. So, they arrive at Spirit Canyon, and they have to go through this rigmarole to actually find the White Pueblo. They've got to shoot an arrow into the sky at the exact moment of um, summer solstice, and if it passes correctly through, then the White Pueblo will open. But time's running out, and uh, two arrows have been shot, and they only have one left. She decides to lash the uh, fetish to the arrow, and guess what? That's the secret that will undo it. And all of a sudden, she doesn't know it, but the beast appears. It's Lucky. So she fires the arrow into Lucky because she thinks he's the beast and she's got to protect the kids, but it passes through his heart, and the next thing you know, the white pueblo appears. Lucky dies. The professor shows up. She's got to revive Lucky. Um, the Indians praise her for her work. The spirit gods praise her for their work. And something happens to um, something happens to Zach. And at the very end, there's an ironic ending 
they find the white Pueblo, but they can't tell anybody about it, and she's given the task of being the protector in the future. And one last thing, Lucky, to thank them, says, hey, Professor, why don't you dig in your own backyard? He does, and what does he find? The largest dinosaur ever found on Earth. <laughs> That's the story.